Mike Moore Media, the first place to hear Rockingham County news and information. On this edition of Rise Up Reedsville, I'm talking to Jill Weston, City of Reedsville Market Square Main Street Manager. Hey, Jill, how are you? I'm great. Good morning. Well, it's uh, good to have you on the program. Uh, I know this is a crazy year and everyone's thinking outside of the box uh, to do things differently. Uh, And you had some changes from your Halloween event from tonight to last night. So bring us up to date. How did that how did that go, Jill? Yes, it was, uh, you know, we planned for it today, which, you know, looking outside the window this morning, good call. Yeah. <laughs> so, first of all, we, we didn't even have this event in the past. Of course, I've only been here seven weeks, so I'm new to the game, too. So, uh, lots of changes in general. But this event was added as trying to give the community something to do for trick-or-treat, since so many things have been canceled. So, due to the hurricane coming... We had to make the decision to switch and and actually bring it a day earlier, which was last night. So of course our fear was, gosh, are people going? Are they going to check, you know, Facebook? Are they going to get the word? And I have to tell you, social media, what a great resource mm-hmm. because we had a stellar turnout. Wonderful a lot, line all the way out. We started about ten minutes early. Uh, had the you know, police department, fire department, most of our our department heads, and um, had tables and. Hopefully you'll see some photos um, online, but uh, the community was so responsive, so thrilled to have something to do. Uh I mean, we just had a great time. In spite of a few little sprinkles here and there, we made it happen. Well, it's good to make things happen and uh, and be able to change things, and the response is is great, so I'm I'm glad to hear that. Well, yeah, you're having to, to get creative on some things, so bring us up to date, Jill. What are some things you're working on? Well, actually, the interesting thing is everything that we're doing for the holiday season is new or modified. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not always bad. Right. Because we've had some exciting things going on. So um, in November, starting actually next week, we're doing a a co-op kind of with the uh, library here, a program called Story Walk. And what it is is we, we have two books, one for November and one for December, and you print the pages of the book, put them in the storefronts going down your downtown, and children actually literally walk and read the story, hence the word story walk. Oh, how neat. What a neat idea. So, yeah, we have a little bookmark of all the the businesses that are participating and a map on the back, and it's on Scale Street. And so they can pick it up at the library, any of these these, uh, downtown businesses, and walk the story. And we just think it's a great way to get people walking downtown, to promote literacy, and we're really excited, and we hope that people really enjoy it. Okay, so Story Walk launches next week. Launches next week. Mm-hmm. Okay. We were we were potentially going to going to put them up today, but we've decided to postpone since the weather's yeah. not uh, not so fabulous. Uh, so uh, another good the, uh, call. No, yeah. yeah, the November book is called Gracias and Thanks. So it's a bilingual book, and we're really excited about offering that to our community. And then the December book is When Winter Comes, and it's got absolutely beautiful illustrations. Oh, what a cool so, idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, tell me about the Holiday Hunt card. Holiday Hunt card. Yes. Yeah, so we, uh, we had these, we give these out in all the bags that we gave out at the Trick or Treat event last night. And, and this is basically, we have about 16 downtown businesses that are on this card. And you can, again, pick it up at one of these downtown businesses. And when you pick up the card, you, if, if you visit 10 businesses, you get a little sticker on the card. Mm-hmm. And that will be you bring it back to City Hall, put it in the water box. That way we have no contact. And we've got um, some drawings for prizes. And there is no way I can describe how cool these prizes are because they are candy trees. And when I say candy trees, I mean layers. Think of a Christmas tree, mm-hmm. layers of candy going Ooh. all the way up. Oh, that so sounds that's, good. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, a, that's a child's dream, right? Yeah. And then the grand prize is if you spend $35 at any of the downtown businesses, and it can be a combination, and then you get a staff person to sign the card, you turn that in, and then this is a very exciting gift we're giving away, um, tickets to the grand opening of the new theater. So we're really excited to be able to offer that, which which they're hoping to be open in January. So we wanted to promote that and uh, let the community know what a great thing that is that's coming. Oh, okay. 
So uh, be on the lookout for that, the holiday hunt card and yes. uh, good prizes. Um, we're, we're getting ready for the holidays for sure, and you're having a, a window decorating contest downtown? Yes, and, you know, when I came on, I asked, hey, have, have we ever had a window decorating contest downtown? And a few people said, well, I think so. Well, maybe a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, let's go ahead and spark that back up. So, uh, so far, I already have 10 businesses that are interested, which is great. And basically, they're just decorating their windows. Um, another opportunity to get the community downtown, I think it might spark them to maybe go a little, a little further with their decorations. We're going to judge those list everybody that participated and, you know, give our first, second, and third prize uh, ribbons so everybody can see um, those nicely decorated windows. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, what about the uh, the movies? With uh, Market Square has, uh, has been doing that for a while now and, and gets a lot of attention. What's the latest there? Well, yeah, we, you know, obviously this summer everything got kind of put on hold. And so, one of the things we were trying to figure out what to do this year for, for Christmas, you know, we don't want a, a bah humbug Christmas. Mm-hmm. So um, there's a couple of things that are going on. One is um, we are going to light the tree and have a televised tree lighting with a little bit of singing. This is brand new. We just kind of, this has all come together the last week. Mm-hmm. With some singing, we're going to have Santa there. And um, you know, this has really sparked off of, uh, WGSR, the TV station, mm-hmm. they really want to do something called Save Christmas because everybody's a little down about, you know, what's been going on. And so their idea is to televise some of these things. So mm-hmm. they're going to televise that tree lighting. You know, we're not going to have no, no participation as far as spectators. And they are going to do the Reedsville Christmas Parade mm-hmm. okay. in, a different, in a different way. It right. will be Sunday, Sunday December 6th. At 5 p.m., and what it is is people are going to come decorate their vehicles, deck deck them all out, and drive a parade route. And then, of course, those that'll be televised. The TV station is going to capture those. So again, I want to reiterate: we don't want spectators on the streets for safety, but they'll be able to watch that, and if they want to participate, so they can check with uh, the TV station for more information on that. And then getting to what you'd asked about, drive-in. So one of the things I thought was, well, why can't we do a drive-in movie? Wouldn't that be kind of cool for Christmas? Mm -hmm. So uh, we are going to do a drive-in at J.C. Park, Polar Express, which is a fun movie to do because the kids can dress up in their pajamas, and we're going to have a little craft we give each kid they can make in the car, you know, safely done. It's going to be December 12th at 6.30 p.m. Now, we are going to have sign-ups for this. This isn't just going to be open, anybody come, because we don't. last thing we want is people to show up and not be able to get in. You know, the screen is only so large, so we are going to do a sign-up. They need to look on Facebook and other avenues to sign up for that event. And we are going to have some food vendors out there, do you know, social distancing in line, getting hot dogs, and, you know, Kelly's Kitchen is going to be here, a few others. So we're really excited to be able to offer some of these new events to the community. Oh, certainly. J.C. Yeah. Park getting a lot of uh, extra attention, more than usual now. Isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah. it sure, it sure <laughs> is. Yeah. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, Polar Express. What a wonderful movie that is, a drive-in movie experience there. Saturday, December 12th, 6.30 p.m., J.C. Park. And, right. uh, and the holiday parade, although uh, that's getting real creative on that, but uh, that will be held Sunday, December 6th, 5 p.m., and I'm, I was checking around before we talked, Jill, and this may be the only Christmas parade in Rockingham County. I'm, I, it looks like it well, right now. even more than Rockingham County, because, you know, I get information about all different downtowns and cities, and, you know, basically everything is canceled, canceled, canceled. And yeah. I think that's one of the things that, that our community said, we don't want to have to cancel everything. We really, we need, the community is hungry for something, um, we're all kind of, you know, tired of what's been happening, but realize we need to be safe. And, you know, I'm going to make a plug now to um, remind everybody to wear their masks. You know, one thing that was said in a meeting I was at this week, Mayor Donaker said, you know, we are the only city that has pr- has printed and made enough masks for our entire community. Mm-hmm. Team reads for masks. Boy, they're going like crazy. Masks. Everybody's wearing them. And we have had, um, yeah, we've had functions that we can give them out everywhere we can. 
And, um, you know, I, I think that if, if anybody wants a mask, all you got to do is give us a call. I mean, we have got plenty to give out. So there's certainly no reason for anybody to feel like, you know, they don't have one or they can't afford to go buy the washable type because we've got we'd love to give you one mm-hmm. or 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 so or more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And some some yes. nice grant funding has made that possible. Yes. Yeah. Um, Judy Orbar has been uh, responsible for that program and she's done a great job. I mean, we've gone out into the community and what a great way to get to know um, the members of the community and being out there and handing those out. It's just it's a, it's different opportunities that we have. To me, we have to look at what's happening in our world as an opportunity. Uh, that's exactly right. Yeah. And uh, yes, opportunity being um, a key word for sure and community and unity at the end of it there and all of that. Uh, you mentioned a moment ago the old theater. Of course, the uh, one of the big things since uh, you've you've come to the city is the uh, the Reedsville Showcase that's uh, opening now. You've told us in hopefully in January. Isn't that exciting? Extremely exciting. I think you know I um, I worked in the Burlington area for their downtown for a long time, and um, they have a a theater there that was revitalized many years ago, and it draws, uh, you know, a lot of people to the community, and I really see that happening here as well. Um, the couple that bought it, they're, they're a wonderful couple. Um, I think they're very excited to be here. And now with the brewery across the street, I think this will spark other businesses to want to come. And, you know, I think one thing we really would like to see more downtown is some nightlife, mm-hmm. safe nightlife. And I think it's just such a great catalyst. I mean, at that, um, at the dedication of that, it was just so heartwarming to you know hear the the uh, the owners that are that sold it, um, you know, and how how much how important it was to them to be able to kind of pass on the legacy. Um, mm-hmm. It was really heartfelt, and uh, it, it's a great thing. Yeah, to it, not it, just see it closed up for you know for years on end. I mean, that's not what we want. No, and and you've seen that in so many other communities as well. You know, all across the state, old theaters that just uh, sit there and and fall apart. You know, over the years. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, that is encouraging for sure. And yeah, you're right. Sometimes it takes uh, some key people to just. Uh, come into a community and, and as a catalyst to, to help others uh, uh, get uh, get going on some projects? It takes one. It takes one person to have the courage to to do something neat, and then and then it just it dominoes from there, and that's what's great about downtowns. I, I venture to say in the next two, three years, you're going to see a whole lot of changes here. Mm-hmm. Well, good things are happening now, and I'm so glad you're part of Team Reedsville uh, welcome again, and uh, we're wishing you much success and uh, a difficult year, challenging year, but uh, looking for those opportunities to make things happen. That's right. I'm, I'm enjoying it so far, and uh, it's a great group to work with, and uh, I'm excited about the future. Okay, we are too. Jill, thanks again. All the best, and we'll talk again soon. All right, thank okay, you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Jill Weston, as you just heard, uh, here uh, seven weeks now at uh, – the city of Reedsville with uh, Market Square and Main Street as the manager and uh, overseeing some exciting things. You can get uh, more information about what's happening at riseupreedsville.com.